meaning is in the eye of the beholder. So for instance, while I might be taking a walk in the park and I stumble across this puddle, I might think to myself, dirty shit water. But if I were a duck and I lived in this park, right, or I was migrating here, I would probably think to myself, bath water. Meaning is incredibly subjective. It's really based on our experiences. And I think a lot of times we get stuck in our frame of mind of just seeing things the way we see them and not the way others do. I invited my friend Infinite Outlaw, who was also known as Outlaw Harvest and Ultra Game Room before that, to discuss what YouTube means to us. Because he and I kind of go back. He probably was around my channel a few months into its conception. And he was doing his own thing too. And I really wanted to see how our opinions about YouTube matched up. I think it made for a great podcast. So with that, kick back, enjoy the podcast. This is episode four, YouTube and I. Hey everyone, and welcome to another installment in The Majority Cast. I have a very special guest with myself, with myself, with me. Would you care to introduce yourself? Hey everybody, I'm uh, Infinite Outlaw, uh, formerly known as Outlaw Harvest and um, way too many other names. Uh, Majority has uh, mentioned me on his channel several times, but I've never actually done a real podcast. Um, I know, this is so exciting! I'm so excited. I can't even tell you how excited I am. Um, I think we've been trying to arrange this for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, as as um, my good friend the outlaw has told you, I've shouted him out a number of times. And the, the reason for that is mostly because I, I see a lot of creative potential in him. And I've definitely seen him grow as a creator in my time knowing him. So that's been exciting for me to watch. Um. Oh, thank Aside you. Aside from that, anything else you want to say? Oh, I, I was just thanking you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's no problem. Um, the format of today's show is going to be a little loose. The theme of the month is YouTube, and I invited the outlaw to join me to discuss YouTube because I feel like we kind of like came up at a similar time on YouTube. And, I mean, came up, I'm using that kind of loosely, but, you know, we've been we've been growing as creators at like a similar pace. And um, I feel like we have both very unique perspectives on it. So we're going to talk about some various aspects and see where the podcast takes us. Yeah, I mean, we both um, sort of came up from uh, classic game room when I uh, I mean, I, I started out in like 2013 doing Minecraft videos and I did like a couple reviews that I was basically ripping off mark i'll be honest here and i mean those videos can't even be found anymore but um i started another channel in 2015 and i did you know very much like the review type of videos that mark would do hmm yeah i still remember them i remember them fondly i remember the gyrus review i remember going on the classic gamer website and giving you a toast um i don't know if you remember that feature Oh yeah, uh, you yeah. used to be able to go like to a little beer mug and toast videos that have been uploaded, mm. and I thought yours was pretty refreshing, even if you were Jack and Mark, you know, like it's totally <laughs> fine. Yeah, um, I I would uh, when Mark would do his Q and As, I would always go on the forums and ask weird questions. I remember at one point I left like a gigantic story about uh, John Claude Van Damme and like Truxton or something in some kind of weird like. <laughs> parallel universe i can't even entirely remember what it was but he read the entire thing in his uh your, your username was incredible it was like truxton for vextrex be featuring john claude van damme <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know the question either but that's a that's a baller username <laughs> thank you yeah it, it's yeah. basically all of the big um 
<laughs> CGR jokes just rammed into one. <laughs> yeah, it was so timely. It was so fitting, and he definitely appreciated it. I know we did too. Mm. Yeah, I, I miss those Q and As. He, the way he would, you know, go up and interact with his audience so closely and answer every question. Um, after so long of like not responding to comments, um, he did those Q and A videos, and he, you, you really felt a sense of connection uh, with Mark in those videos before. Um, you know, CGR started making a lot of big changes. So I, I really miss those. I, I think I'm going to rewatch those after uh, we do this podcast. That's, that's awesome. Um, I, I definitely have those fond memories. You know, a lot of, it's easy to like point and say like, this is the best year for this channel. And I think like one thing I hear a lot is the year that you really start watching the channel is like usually your best year with them. Like I think Smosh was saying that or something on, um, another podcast I was listening to. And I feel like, you know, since we both came up in the 2013, 2014 era, um, we got to interact with it personally. And one thing I've said about like one of the reasons I love CGR Undertow is because it was like its own comment community. And even like being on the website, being part of that, like he really pushed you to go to the website and like leave the comments and interact with the, the users. It was, it was a real sense of like being a part of something. And to me, that was really fulfilling was like knowing like this is a place on the internet I can kind of fit in. Oh yeah, definitely. With CGR Undertow especially, like the way you would have a video just coming out every day, it, it feels like an event. It it feels like you're part of a community and you're just following um everything as it comes out, you know. Hmm. It's almost like, what's going to happen next? Is he going to drive out in an El Camino? Is he um, <laughs> going to film, you know, toys getting massacred in a warehouse or on the front <laughs> lawn? And then seeing what the hell happens with Derek, too. It was just, it was, it was a real, it was a treat to be a part of that. Yeah. So I'm glad we kind of like got into the CGR topic. Um, I think, you know, he was very inspiring for both of us. He's very inspiring for my friend Alex, too. Um I think, you know, we did, we kind of copied his format, just like taking off, like, which is review a game and like try and be fun about it, but also like try and uh, be informative too. I think we took like the best from both CGR and CGR Undertow. Um, how did you feel about being a YouTube reviewer, maybe then and maybe now? Um, uh, when I uh, first started out doing my uh, reviews, like... I was really excited to talk about the things that I was talking about, um, but I kind of lamented doing a lot of them just because I felt that my videos were bad and I wasn't really doing the, the kind of content that I felt like I would watch necessarily. Like, I really hated listening to my voice when I first started out, and I really wanted to try and, like, explain my thought process better, but I think... When you first start out on YouTube, everyone has these thoughts because um, no one's going to be very good at something when they first start out. And you were young too. Yeah, yeah, I, you were I, really young. I, I was. I, I admired that. I think I was thirteen um, when I first did the Gyrus review. And I mean, for for doing that when you're thirteen, that was really impressive. Yeah, like I, 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 I don't know. Like maybe maybe you look back on those and and you know you feel certain way even like you're saying like you know at that time you don't like it and i understand um but like you had sketch comedy in there and to be able to do that at 13 is is you know this it's no small feat oh thank you despite like your you know your equipment you know or whatever you can record with i, I thought like that to me was like what really pulled me to your channel and i like that you're playful with the medium maybe you like you weren't even aware of it like you know in terms of like defining it but like that's what i saw when I, I first saw your channel yeah um i i when i uh first made that video i was using a windows xp computer and i had no idea how to like mess with audio or to render things or anything like that so i was kind of bouncing around in the dark i remember i rendered the uh hd video onto a uh, Windows Movie Maker, the XP version, which then turned it into, like, not HD, but then I tried to, like, re-render it in HD on the other video editor, and then it turned it into, like, this weird 
mesh of like encoding. It didn't. It didn't look good. I didn't know how to do um, the the rendering portion. I was very confused. And then uh, for the audio, like I had no idea how to change audio levels because on the editor that I had, you couldn't really. It was like a random free video editing software that I I found that just happened to work with Windows XP. Um, and like my computer would constantly crash, and it it was very hard to make those first set of videos. But you know, because my heart called out to YouTube so much, I just kept on doing it, even though I kind of didn't enjoy myself that much a lot of the time, just because what I was making I felt was so bad. But I I had ideas that I wanted to express, and I wanted to be a YouTuber. Um, and so I just kept going in spite of the frequent limitations that I faced. My gosh, man, those first videos, like not just yours, but mine too. Like I didn't, that was like a crapshoot. Like I remember like it's, you can't watch it anymore and I'll probably like bring it up again sometime in the future. But like my first video is like a review of brain age two. I'm holding a flip cam, which has like the worst video quality ever where everything is like super grainy and um, you know, it doesn't look good. I'm holding it up to my DS and brain age is a game where you have to like tilt the DS sideways. You can't even like just play it by touching like the stylus or anything. Then I recorded my audio. I think like reading a script into audacity without looking at the game footage. And it was just, it was like, I was lucky it came out as good as it did, which wasn't even that good, but it could have been a disaster. Um, I feel like, you know, going forward, you, you start to pick up those tricks and I think like that's kind of the beauty of video making is like, you don't have anyone who's like teaching you to do it. You kind of just do it and you figure it out on your own and you make those mistakes in order to kind of like flesh out what it is you want to do. Mm. And I feel like, you know, for us to the, like the come up on YouTube was very experimental. And like, even both you and me, we, we have videos that like we, we kind of push in the past. Like, yeah, I mean, we'll bring them up again later, but like, you know, that's not part of who we are now. Yeah. Yeah. The, especially with me, like the identity of my channel at the time compared to, you know, a few months ago and then compared to now is very different. I kind of think of it like in, like, uh, excuse me, like of, um, arcs of a story like you have the beginning part and then i'm you know making all these cgr style reviews and then i'm just figuring out my equipment and as a result of figuring out your equipment you kind of experiment a bit you know i had a video where i learned how to teleport and i um <laughs> i realized that oh wow if i get out of the way of the camera and i had a shot of me where i recorded the camera but then i like snap my finger and then splice in the, that same shot where I'm not in front of the camera, it'll look like I mm. teleport. And I, I thought it was the coolest thing ever at the time. I was really proud of figuring that out. Um, uh, so I had um, you know, been experimenting in various ways like that. And then you go on a little bit further. I start getting some better equipment. You know, I start figuring things out a bit more. And then like I just made a dramatic shift in my content and I started moving more towards like the analytical ideas stuff and I started talking about cartoons uh, for a while and then I moved on to where I am now which is like whatever weird idea I have basically hmm it's it's interesting like you go through these chapters and I feel like you know, some people, they can't adapt and they can't make the changes they need to, or they make their changes in other ways. They don't change their content, but they change like the style. And, you know, like Mark's uh, definitely a prime example of that. Um, he's like tried to shift, but never like to, to really change what it is he does. But like, he's, I don't know. That's another, that's another topic that's already covered. But I think like it's important for, you know, a YouTuber to branch out, but at the same time, like, remember where they came from in the beginning. You know, I hear a lot of the big YouTubers say this is like, um, oh, what did I hear them say? I was listening to, I was listening to Markiplier, of all people, um, and he said something like remembering those first few videos where it was really just for fun, mm -hmm. and for me, it's always like, it's almost like that quote, right, where it's, 
every day is a learning opportunity and like it's another chance to learn something or I learned something new today. And for me, every time I make a video, it's like I learned something new. I learn how to improve my thumbnails. I learn how to um, look at the camera better or like sync up my audio or whatever it is. And, um, you know, up until last year, I was using Windows Movie Maker the entire time. Um, just even upgrading to iMovie, which is technically dated, like, by 10 years, has helped me immensely. And I'm, like, amazed by all of the little things I can put together. Just wait till the day I upgrade even further and I actually get, like, the Adobe Premiere or the Sony Vegas. Then it's just going to be, I'm going to have, like, a mind, I, I'm not going to fill in the blank there, but a mind blank. Yeah, yeah, um... I, I've been using Sony Vegas for a little bit now, um, ever since uh, I had upgraded uh, the computer to Windows 7 one. Um, I had uh, uh, this, ooh, this is, this is some illegal talk here, but I had uh, pirated <laughs> the, um, the uh, Sony Vegas. I, 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 the cops are going to come in and barge down my door now after I said that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna ask you where they can get it. <laughs> yeah, they they want to make yeah. YouTube reviews. That's a joke. It's a joke. Mm. Yeah. I know you know it's a joke, but don't know that the listeners do. Yeah, you're you're gonna get an angry comment of someone saying, "Respect the police force over here." How dare right. you make this joke? Hey, I just want to make sure they have good vlog channels too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um. Yeah, the technical side of YouTube is, is fascinating. And then even, like, how YouTube has changed technically. Like, I don't think it's changed that much in, like, our four or five years doing this. But I think, like, there have been a few changes. Have you noticed any? Uh, live streaming, to me, is, like, the most notable one. And uh, getting rid of the ability to monetize is also one that I think has made a lot of yeah. channels stop. Did, the, did a lot of channels stop? Yeah, but I, I, it's, it's, I think for, I, I, it's most of the, um, like, factory type of channels, uh, like, the ones who just upload, you know, the same toy reviews every single day, but, like, with different titles to, like, clickbait people and drama channels who really only do it for ads. A lot of them are quitting now unless they can make it on Patreon, but... Um, I feel like with a lot of these factory channels who just do the most clickbait content, the thing about Patreon is that it's for people who really care about your content, and I don't think very many people care about a lot of these like super clickbaity, only doing it to get AdSense type of people. And so mm. they end up just dying out because, well, there's no money here, um, not much of a reason to keep going. And I feel like that's a good thing because... Now the site is just more about the, uh, you know, the, the core creator, the ones who really care about their crafts and, and want to try. But at the same time, it's also sad for, you know, the people who actually do try really hard and can't make it on AdSense. That's very unfortunate a side effect mm. of that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that I didn't know I wanted to go into this so soon in the podcast, but we might as well. Um, I'm glad to hear it's actually, you know, working for what it was intended for. I, cause I mean, if there's anything I dislike about YouTube, it's really the oversaturation of garbage content. And I mean, like what you said, like factory channels, that sounds like some straight trash. Um, and then again, you know, I don't know, like toy reviews and stuff. It, I mean, I, and to some respect, I like the fact that it just cancels out or like gets rid of the people who were only ever in it to try and make a fast buck. Who are just like uploading content for the hope of like monetizing. Like I hear a lot of people say like, or not a lot, but I've read this comment several times saying like, um, oh, I've made like several hundred dollars off of this video that I posted seven years ago. It's almost like negating that and kind of ensuring that people are actually putting a little more effort into it. So that's that's pretty refreshing to hear. Yeah. Um I know it's kind of discouraging to have like our ads lost. Um, and I mean, I have some questions around that, like, you know, just discussion questions, I guess before I, I really get to the monetization stuff, what is YouTube to you? Uh, I think YouTube is, um, 
basically like the ultimate version of uh, freedom to be a creator. Anybody can upload here. Anybody can just have an idea and then make that idea for virtually like no money. Um, you know, you go online, get an editor, you, uh, you know, take out your old camera. It doesn't even have to be a good camera. You, you, your phone has a camera on it and everyone has a phone. You know, you can just take out whatever you have. It doesn't even have to be that good of quality. You just have to have an idea. If you have an idea, you can go out and make whatever you want. And I think that's the beauty of YouTube. Now, all of a sudden, everyone has a platform to have an idea and then just show it to possibly millions of people. Um, and that's why I think YouTube is kind of like the ultimate version of freedom in a sense, is that it's never been this easy to make films or, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, just because the tools are so ubiquitous and it's so easy to upload things to the site. So um, I think that's the big appeal of YouTube and why it's so cool. Um, and it's certainly why I go to the, the site every day because these people, they just have so much charm. Even though like you, it's not a Hollywood film or anything, you know, there, there's charm in people trying hard to make something neat or trying to express an idea that you wouldn't be able to express anywhere else. There are things that you can do on YouTube that, you know, filmmakers could never do just because no one would trust them with the budget to do those things. But because you're independent, you can do whatever you want. And so to me, that's that's the dream right there. And I think YouTube captures it. It was like a five-star response. You deserve an award for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, anytime. I, I'm inclined to agree. And you know like how the, the phrase reality TV is like a total paradox, right? It's like, you know, you watch reality TV. It's the furthest thing from reality. Yeah. If reality TV was not like, you know, <laughs> a backwards set of words, that like what you see on YouTube would just about be it. Like, it is real people going on, you know, a, a media sharing platform and sharing their experiences. And it's not always going to be like sit in front of a camera and talk. Sometimes people just take movies and videos and um, they capture it in all these different ways, whether it's like a vlog video discussing things or just like taking videos of things. It, it's it's really fascinating to see um, YouTube as a creative outlet and like what people do with it. And in combination with a lot of the technical aspects, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the bigger channels, they, um, how would I say this? They, they kind of like find their way of telling their stories and they master it in terms of the technical craft and the content. Mm -hmm. And I think YouTube's a real opportunity to explore both of those avenues. Yeah. Um, it's funny you mention reality TV there because I, I definitely feel like YouTube is the core idea of what that's supposed to be. Like you think about reality TV and everyone says, oh yeah, it's not real, but the intent of it is to simulate someone's life. You find an interesting person and you um, try and put their life in as an entertaining way. But uh, the problem with a lot of those shows is that all of the events in their lives are fabricated, and, and so it doesn't feel genuine. But the great thing about YouTube is, I mean, sure, there are some people who are just going to lie, but I, I don't really see the motivation in a lot of people that they would do that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think there's definitely a lot more of an, of an element of genuinity to it. Like, you get up in front of your camera, and you just talk about what happened in your day and an interesting experience you had and you just describe it. Um, and you're getting a piece of somebody's life. You're getting a piece of their reality. And uh, it's, it's a show. So I, I think YouTube, it kind of captures um, that idea of you get a simulation of someone's life and you sort of get, a, get time with an interesting person and you get to know more about the world because... You, you can understand that person's perspective. And um, it, it's kind of like a real version of reality TV, you know? Hmm. I know for a lot of people, they uh, substitute TV with YouTube. 
Like, I mean, I used to watch, you know, cartoons on television, at, like, up until I was about 13. And um, I think then I started turning more towards, like, the social media. You know, I was of that age where it was coming up. Um, and I would watch some stuff on YouTube. I had my ins and outs with it over the years. Like, I, I definitely, there were times where I didn't watch as much YouTube. Um, but I think it's it's an appealing alternative to television. You know, television, you have to, like, sit through a bunch of ads, ironically, and, you know, it's in order to watch something that's not really as much about, like, like a realistic person that you could know in real life. It's more so about, like, a character that someone puts on. And we all do that to some extent. We put on characters and we try and be entertaining. Um, but there's something definitely human about it. And I think that's what I like the most about YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um... I think with personas on YouTube, everyone, it's its not like you're getting, you know, just the average Joe in their absolute real life. Everyone sort of tries to heighten the experience and to maybe talk with more charisma. But at the core of it, it's still, you know, the truth of their life and the, um, like, uh, the essence of who they are. Uh, even though they're, they might be talking in a, a bigger tone or um, to try and be exciting, but that, you know, that's just how you're entertaining, you know, you wouldn't say a comedian isn't super genuine just because they're up there telling jokes and being kind of crazy, the, their message is still, you know, very genuine and to the heart, most of them anyway, and so um, I, I think, like, the way TV was designed is you have it on all day, and YouTube is very much similar, because you look at people like Let's Players or vloggers or anything like that, um, and you can just have them up in a playlist and just play them all day, and you can be doing other stuff in your in your day, um, and you know it's it's better than having like a soap opera or something on that you would normally have on the TV while doing the dishes, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've definitely put like people's YouTube playlists on if I'm trying to do like housework or something. And usually what happens is I get distracted and I go back to watching the YouTube. But I mean, like even for people who play video games, they'll put like YouTube playlists on and like grind while listening to someone's, you know, videos. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I do that a lot with like more uh, sandboxy type of games or shooters, especially um, because in a shmup, you know, you've got the music going and all that, and after a certain point, you've heard the music enough times to where you don't really need to listen to it on its native level. So I'll just have a podcast on, and I'll be, you know, focusing on the game and trying to get better at the game, but I'll also have background noise to have, you know, some interesting people talking to one another uh, while I'm playing the game, and it's it's a great way to kind of... Uh, kill two birds with one stone because you know it's you you get two good feeling experiences at once and it's really nice mm. and th there is something therapeutic about it where it's like and communicative like you actually get to have people it feels like you're interacting with um i <laughs> i definitely like cut down on my real world friends unfortunately mm. um but i i think youtube has been like it's been a i wouldn't say a, a hundred percent substitute for that but i mean it, it gives me something that also like i don't think i could get from most people in real life and it's, it's like so hard to find those people youtube just makes them very accessible where you can kind of like filter for the kind of creators and people you would want to engage with oh yeah definitely um like i feel like similar people end up in the same place um if you're on you know the cgr forms for example and you find a creator uh, there who makes videos similar to CGR, the reason all of the people are there is because they have similar minds and they're from, you know, a similar type of culture. Um, and so because they all share those uh, things that they like, they end up in the same spot. And they end up talking with one another or, you know, just watching one another's videos. And you make friends that way. Um, and I... I can definitely say from experience of uh, some of my own friends, later in uh, the summer, I'm actually going out to Anime Expo to meet uh, some of my internet friends because um, 
You know, I, I've met these great people who I related to way more than I related to people uh, in real life. And so I fostered, you know, far deeper um, and more fun relationships with them. And so uh, I think because of that um, type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Putting everything in the same spot, you know, you, you end up finding uh, very cool, relatable people. And w with YouTube in general, th there's definitely this sense of even if, you know, you don't relate to the person at all, if you just find like an interesting person making vlogs and you listen to what they have to say, um, YouTube kind of as a tool makes it to where you can understand this person's perspective that you would have never met in real life before and you sort of understand more about people in the world around you because you you know you find out about this totally new type of dude and um you know you wouldn't have been able to experience that that's so true it really does give you like a lens for looking into like yourself and others and i think one of the things i appreciate the most about like those forum sites or even youtube in general is just how inviting they are like you know you you kind of triggered a memory in my mind about exactly why I started, you know, making videos. And when we were on the CGR site, there was literally, when they opened up video sharing on there, they said, hey, come share your review videos. You know, like, help build the site. And I took that, like, I really took that to heart. Like, you know, it never crossed my mind to like start making videos again. I'd, I'd done it like twice in my life. You know, I did like lip sync videos. Uh, what else did I do? I took one video of like something in Hawaii once, but I never thought like, oh, I could be a journalist right now and I could just do this. I don't need to like go to school for it or anything. And people are actually telling me to do it. And I mean, it was, it was a slow process, like building up the connections. I remember like being at like 17 subscribers for like half a year, but it was it was gratifying and it helped me like discover myself too and just be a little bit more comfortable you know talking and and just being in front of a camera and um even just asserting my own opinions yeah so i i really appreciate like you know the speaker side of youtube too like you know for people who actually talk in front of a camera um i think you have a lot to learn by by practicing it and doing it yeah, yeah, I know for me definitely um, it's helped me in my real life speaking on YouTube so much because I used to be very, very timid. Um, I had insane trouble meeting people and insane trouble holding conversations with people. I wouldn't know how to keep conversation flow going. I wouldn't know how to um, put my thoughts together in a way that was digestible. And so I would end up being very awkward and just being very scared of interaction in general. But because I've talked on YouTube for so long, you know, we're talking about um, since 2013, I've been able to create a, a much more confident voice. Uh, no, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, my voice is good or anything, but, you know, I'm happy with it. I'm happy being able to, to, to speak with people. And before, I wasn't able to do that. Before, I would just, you know, get very very nervous and shy and you know now i can just go up to anybody and be like hey dude you know what's going on and it, I, a lot of it is because i've spent so long on youtube just speaking and speaking and speaking for practice so good man i'm, I'm glad to hear that and you know i think of myself at your age like i think like 16 was really like the age where i really just started coming out of my shell so um it's good man with that, we've actually covered so much in um, a lot of time, and we still have a lot to talk about, but I'm thinking we should probably cut this into a second episode. I'd love to have you back, and um, I was thinking maybe next time we could talk about um, YouTube as, you know, we could get into the monetary aspects and maybe really explore if YouTube is something that is that should be funded, because I feel like that that's the next step to this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Hey, it was great having you, and um, you know this this definitely made it for a great podcast. So you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, it was it was great speaking with you. Thanks for having me on. Um, can't wait till the next one. 
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. The Infinite Outlaw.